Hey everyone, whilst I was at VidCon, I had the pleasure of filming a video with the wonderful Katie Morton. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and I have a mental health channel on YouTube where I talk about all things mental health. In case you didn't know, as well as talking about science, I also care a lot about mental health. And we had quite a long discussion on the topic of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. When researching the here's why you can't trust your memory video, I learned that whilst PTSD is actually usually diagnosed and treated as an anxiety disorder, there is also some evidence for it potentially being a memory disorder. So today we're going to talk about what that means and why I think it's interesting research. Now, before deep diving, I think the best thing is to hand over to Katie to explain what PTSD and trauma is in a nutshell. PTSD really is when we fear for our lives in a situation, it could be something that we see someone else happen. We're like, oh my goodness, something terrible is going to happen to them. They, they could die. They could be in extreme danger. Or we're in a situation where we feel like we can't escape and we fear for our own life. That's essentially a trauma. And when we have a trauma, the response that our body has after it, because it's too much for our brain to process, we experience PTSD. And it's an anxiety disorder, and it can be something where we have flashbacks of the experience. We may um, have memory loss around the time. We may have memories that we feel in our body as if we're back in the experience. In essence, some of the hallmark symptoms of PTSD, such as the memory loss and consistent flashbacks, show a lack of memory consolidation by the brain. And so I asked Katie to talk a bit more about the effect of trauma on declarative memory. And the best way I find to describe traumatic memories um, are comparing them to happy normal memories. So let's say Anais and I go on a vacation and we go skydiving and we eat wonderful food and we go on bike rides, just have the time of our lives and we come back. <laughs> My brain, as I'm doing this, is like writing pretty stories and putting all these files in files and putting them in the, the filing cabinet and shutting the drawer. It all makes sense. It's filed away nicely. Beginning, middle, end. Clear. Wonderful. When we have a trauma, this is why I love Inside Out. Have you guys seen the movie Inside Out? If you haven't, I highly recommend it because then I picture those little nice memories as those marbles in Inside Out. And so we filed them away, right? In the, and we're rolling them into our long-term memory. When we have a trauma, it's like somebody has thrown the marble and it's splintered and it shoots into all those other memories, all those other file folders. It's like chaos. It's like the papers have just gone everywhere and we have to slowly put them back together in a cohesive story, beginning, middle, end. We actually talked quite a bit more about PTSD, different forms of therapy, treatment, and certain controllable risk factors from childhood. So if you want to find out more about that, I encourage you to watch the whole thing over here on Sweet Code. However, I wanted to pause on this topic because I want to focus on the relationship between PTSD and memory. One of the key symptoms in PTSD is that the traumatic memory is not properly processed, which amongst other unpleasant symptoms leads to the intrusive flashbacks, as if the memory were constantly being relived in the present. And not only that, but people with PTSD often report having difficulty recalling other events properly, even if they were unrelated to the trauma itself, which has led to the hypothesis that people with PTSD may process their memories differently. There is actually some neurobiological evidence for this as well. For instance, severely stressed animals have higher levels of glucocorticoids, which are the stress hormones in the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain that processes memory, and they actually perform really badly on memory tests. And adults, although not children with PTSD, also have smaller hippocampi than those without. And in fact, there are two different models which aim to explain this relationship between memory dysfunction and PTSD, and they lie at the opposite end of the nature versus nurture scale. One model suggests that developing PTSD is what leads to the abnormality in memory, meaning that the memory problems could be environmental. The other model suggests that there are inherent genetic factors that lead to certain memory and cognitive deficits that predispose someone to PTSD, and currently I'd say there's more research supporting this model. For example, there are actually studies that looked at identical twins where one was a war veteran with PTSD and the other one had never been exposed to a traumatic event, and researchers found that both had similar memory deficits and smaller hippocampi. Other studies have shown that those with a poorer performance on tests such as working memory, processing speed and verbal intelligence were more likely to develop PTSD symptoms following a natural disaster, and both of these suggest that there may be pre-existing factors or genes that can predispose someone to develop PTSD. And it is thought that perhaps a lower availability of cognitive resources is what prevents traumatic memories from being processed properly, 
thus leading to PTSD. And this of course has consequences in therapy because it means that the memory deficits could also affect or impair how well people respond to therapy. However, I personally think it's a really exciting new avenue for research because it could be evidence for neurobiological markers that can be assessed to perhaps a detect people who would be at greater risk of developing PTSD and provide them with more resources to prevent it, and b to provide new ways of therapy that could target memory processing and reconsolidation, such as by targeting drugs and therapy at specific times after trauma, which would help specifically with memory reprocessing. The research is definitely in its early steps, but I'm really hopeful that it will lead to better treatments in the future. I really hope you found today's episode interesting, and thank you so much Katie for helping me out. We also made a video over on Katie's channel, it's all about the differences and similarities between Tourette's and OCD, which I get asked about a lot, so do go check that out. Our full chat about PTSD is on my mental health channel, Squeak Code, and if this is your first time in your curiosity, then welcome! I make videos about the interesting bits of science that draw my curiosity, and it is great to have you here. You can see some of the videos I'm most proud of them that people seem to like the most over here. All videos and research papers that I've talked about are linked in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one.